Eugenio. Welcome at Reuters Timo Studios in London. It is a great pleasure on behalf of the European and its subscribers to present you with both of your awards. First award is Best Therapeutic Solutions for Italy. Thank you very much. Second award is Best Performing CEO. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great honor to receive these two important awards because it's not just for me, of course, but uh, is, um, I recognize a, a great value that my team has generated in the past 10 years. Thank you very much for that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Dompe is an Italian biopharmaceutical company that focuses on innovation in keeping with a long tradition in the field of healthcare that goes hand in hand with a commitment to research and development to meet therapeutic needs. Well, Dompe has now been awarded Best Therapeutic Solutions and Best Performing CEO in Biotech in Italy. And today, the CEO of the company, Eugenio Arinieri, joins us to discuss the company's success in the industry. A very good day to you. Now, you're driving a biotech company that has a strong commitment to innovation in the life sciences sector. So, in your opinion, what are the key trends that are happening in continental Europe in this region, in this, this sector? Uh, let me say, first of all, that uh, biotech is a great revolution in progress. Uh, biotechnology, in fact, uh, uh, taking up the challenge um, of providing answer to the open question in healthcare. Um, in a landscape uh, that is a complete, in which, of course, there, uh, there are a huge difference compared to the past. Uh, not just for the approach, the approach is different, but also the rules are completely different to the past. We move from a, a very broad approach where the strategic target was the disease in a very narrow approach uh, where the real aim is the passions. And of course, the approach today is a more focused and a personalized. And um, in the end, the research and development is following this kind of a new paradigm and the biotech the biotechnology are at the uh, forefront in this new scenario. And uh, to be honest, uh, Europe in this um, kind of uh, biotech revolution is playing a leading role with uh, more than 2,000 high specialized uh, company, biotech company, and uh, with more than 50,000 high quality employees, and the last but not least, with a huge investment in R&D, seven, eight times more than the average uh, level of investment in the other sectors. And that's the key thing, R&D, research and development, but in light of that and given what you've said, how would you describe the main challenges that companies like yours are facing? Yeah, um, I don't hesitate to say that uh, biotech research uh, in some way, uh, I can say, changed the natural history of the disease. Uh, from the beginning, because uh, if uh, I, I think about the first uh, uh, drug in biotech, a drug, when the, I can say the insulin became available in 1982, it was a, a true revolution, the treatment of diabetes. And uh, from that to the, one of the last drug uh, against, uh, for instance, uh, to the hepatitis C, and uh, this drug uh, gets uh, a new hope uh, to the patients, uh, in the patients, uh, of course, uh, the, for the future of the patients. And the 30, in other words, the 35 years uh, of, uh, I can say, where the biotech uh, get to the patients uh, several solutions, even in, a, in some area where they're not uh, really alternative, like uh, raised diseases. Today, there is uh, all over the world uh, 350 million patients treated with a biotech uh, drug. But however, the innovation in biotech is evolving really f fast. Uh, and uh, I, that's the reason why I, my perception for the future is really positive, because of course, uh, the innovation in biotech will continue, um, I can say, with the same energy for the near future. Mm, and it's, it's fascinating as well when you're talking about innovation and competitiveness, because we've been talking about Europe what about internationally? Because that takes it to a completely different level as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because um, 
we are sincerely in the midst of a, a revolution because uh, uh, the world is uh, uh, changing so rapidly and uh, it's true mostly in the life science. Uh, life science, because uh, um, uh, of course uh, there, um, there are a lot of factors that of course can uh, um, uh, do it. Uh, some external factors, for instance, uh, the uh, life expectancy, it's an important of course uh, factor that uh, influences the, uh, the, uh, um, the lifestyle and of course the healthcare system uh, and they create uh, new medical needs but also some internal factor like the new technology. And of course, uh, a new technology gets us uh, um, some advantages in terms of the diagnosis, but also help us to, uh, I can say, develop uh, a very personalized therapy. And uh, of course, in this new paradigm, uh, there are a different uh, perspective in the research because uh, I can say now we are moving from a, a close innovation where uh, we have been down a lot of activities within the lab to the open innovation approach where the different actors are connected in order to synergize the different, uh, I can say, skill and competences and all the two um, overcome the issue connected with the critical mass. Uh, it's a very new scenario and in my opinion that could be a great opportunity uh, for everyone because of course uh, in this new era two key words can help uh, the new approach in the research. First of all focalization because in, this, in that way we can uh, of course uh, create a competitive advantages if you, if you are focused on specific target and the connection between a different, uh, among the different actors in order to synergize the different uh, competence. And the, these are two key words in the new era of, uh, of biotech uh, development. And, and let's take that, that thought then. Does that mean that from your perspective, how do you apply that to the company's business model? Does that mean that at some stage it will have to be adapted to accommodate these challenges? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because in Dompin, uh, of course, we are leaving uh, a, a second half of the match because after more than 75 years of history and the well-established expertise in the field, we understood that, of course, the new scenario asks us a different strategic approach. And, uh, of course, uh, it, uh, in the last 10 years, uh, we have spent a lot of energy in order to transform our company in terms of a culture, in terms of a process, uh, in terms of... Uh, I can say strategic objectives because uh, suddenly the R&D, the research and development, became a real engine of our growth. In other words, we connect our capability to growth with our capability to create innovation. And we transform a, a local uh, marketing-driven company in international R&D-driven company. Uh, of course, it was very challenging, but the last uh, approval for EMEA of our first biological drug in July for uh, a rare disease, an ocular rare disease, confirmed that uh, this kind of approach works and of course uh, uh, suggested to us to continue in that direction. You're very optimistic about the future. So if you and I are talking in 10 years time, yeah. where do you think Dompe will be? Yeah, bottom line, of course, the strategic objectives for us is to serve the medical needs and the, the patient's need, of course. And uh, we are, I can say, keep in mind this kind of, of strategy. But anyway, in the next three years, uh, we are, I can say, really um, focalized on the commercialization of our first biological drug. And that means that we can try to offer uh, this product to the patients uh, all over. Uh, we will launch the drug in Europe, uh, in, uh, in Germany, in November, and uh, step by step, of course, uh, we uh, reach the other markets. In 2018, uh, we'll launch the drug in the US, and then uh, we try to bring the drug, new drug, uh, all over. But anyway, uh, in, in parallel, uh, we continue to invest in R&D, because, of course, uh, our priority is, uh, is the... Uh, I can say, as I said, that the passion's need and that we have in mind uh, the passion's need uh, who uh, are still waiting. Eugenio Arindieri, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you to you.